Alienware earned itself quite a reputation a couple of years ago with its 34 QD OLED. But if you're a watcher of this channel, you already know that. But it had a strong hook on its side, being the first really good OLED gaming monitor out there that you could buy. That's not really true anymore. So the question is, does this new Alienware monitor, the 32 inch 4K QD OLED model, give the crown back to Alienware? And yeah, spoilers, it totally does for now. Hey everyone, this is Luke with Digital Trends, and yeah, I'm really excited for this one because not only do we get an early chance to review the 32-inch 4K QD OLED from Alienware, we also got in the more eSports friendly model, the 27-inch QHD QD OLED, which we have a whole separate review from Jacob on, on the channel, which you should definitely go check out after this one. These are both very exciting monitors featuring the second-gen QD OLED panels from Samsung Display, so if you like this content and you wouldn't mind, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button to the channel if you haven't already. And let's get into talking about how good this thing really is. So let's start with the specs because that alone will tell you a lot of what you need to know about this monitor. Because really, this is the first of its kind. There have been a few other 4K OLEDs out there, but they've all been stuck at 60 Hertz refresh rate, not really for gaming or they're like these massive 42 inch behemoths. And even then we've never seen a 4K OLED with as high a refresh rate as this, which is 240 Hertz. Now 4K at 240 Hertz might sound a little ridiculous. And for the average gamers PC, yeah, it's still probably a little overkill, despite the fact that there have been a few 4K 240 Hertz gaming monitors out there in the wild, such as the Samsung Odyssey Neo G8. But what this gets you is room to grow, and it'll ensure that your system isn't bottlenecked by the refresh rate in multiple rounds of GPU upgrades down the line. So if you're concerned with the previous Alienware 34 was that it only had a refresh rate of 175 Hertz, that's out of the picture now, which is handy when playing games at a lower resolution. Alienware 32 QD OLED is not an ultra wide. Let's get that out of the way first because it is a major difference between this and the 34 inch model. But as you can see, it does come with a 1600R curve. And for me, I thought it was just subtle enough to not feel weird in the conventional 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now, technically that is slightly more of a curve than on the Alienware 34, but it's really close. And again, this isn't one of those 32 inch 1000R monitors that take the curve way too far for this size. I think 1600R suits this size of monitor really well, just gently wrapping around your field of view and creating a little bit of immersion, if you wanna call it that, but it's not at all a distraction in the way that it could have been. Aside from the panel itself, a lot of what you see here on the 32 inch model resembles the 34 inch model. So the design and the setup is all basically identical, including the base, the stand and the lighting on the back. Got that two tone black and white vibe, which has kind of become iconic from Alienware at this point. But the back is still made out of plastic, which admittedly doesn't feel great when you, you know, reach up to adjust the monitor or something like that, especially compared to these newer Samsung monitors, which have a bit more of a premium feel. Speaking of adjustment, you do have just over four inches of height adjustment and 40 degrees of tilt, which all matches what you could do with the Alienware 34. And of course you can swivel as well. It's enough to give you a comfortable position if you move things around to find it. The same is true of the on-screen controls, same as the Alienware 34, which happens all with the center joystick. It's all done really nicely. Like with the Alienware 34, however, you still won't find any built-in speakers here, which continues to bother me, despite the fact that most people probably won't use them very often. It's just that there will be that one time, you know, where your AirPods die and you're in a meeting and you don't have any audio at all and it completely ruins everything, you know, completely hypothetical, it's never happened before, but that situation could technically come up. There's one other small but meaningful change to the back, which is in the ports. You've got DisplayPort 1.4 for the full 240 Hertz at 4K, and an assortment of USB ports, including an upstream type B port, three USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and the USB-C for power delivery. Biggest change to the ports though, is the inclusion of HDMI 2.1 this time around, which turns out to be kind of a big deal for this monitor. So we're gonna talk about that later and move on to image quality, because that's where there is actually a difference this time around. QD OLED here is the star of the show, of course, but this isn't 2022. Again, there are plenty of great OLED monitors out there these days. Just look at our video rounding up the best options from all of last year. 
The new Alienware 32 uses a brand new QD OLED panel from Samsung Display that isn't just in a new size and aspect ratio. This is actually better. The good stuff is all still the same here. It's still OLED. You still get those perfect black levels. You still get the same brightness. I measured well over a thousand nits at a 1% window and around 830 nits at a 4% window. And that's important because color actually does still significantly drop at those higher brightness levels. And again, this is a monitor, you're sitting, you know, really close to it. But the combination of those black levels and the 1000 nit peak brightness is some really gorgeous HDR performance in games. And if you haven't experienced this yet, if you haven't played games on a monitor that can actually do HDR proper, you got to try it because it really does make a huge difference in bringing games to life. But when you're not playing games, and I have to mention this, the Alienware 32 isn't a super bright monitor in SDR. You're still only getting around 260 nits of brightness with HDR turned off, which I got in the creator mode. I do still wish it were a little brighter without HDR, especially compared to, you know, just about any high-end laptop you might have, which sometimes can have up to twice this much brightness. If you're like me and you find yourself in an office setting with some bright overhead lights on, often I found myself often keeping HDR on, which Windows 11 manages to handle fairly well while using this monitor at full brightness. But again, that's just me. I like to sear my eyes with brightness while working. And I know a lot of people both work and game from much darker environments at home. But getting back to image quality real fast, if there's one thing that the Alienware 34 struggled with, it was color accuracy. It's not that it was bad, but it was sort of middle of the road for a high-end display rather than exceptional in the way that monitor was in pretty much every other aspect. This new crop of QD OLED monitors really fixes that in a big way. Those overblown greens and reds are no more. In fact, I measured an average color error of just 0.56, which makes it, along with the 27 inch model we're reviewing, the most color accurate monitors we've ever tested. And that includes testing we've done on laptops and even MacBooks, you name it. And just as a reminder, that's out of the box color performance before calibration, which really is kind of amazing, especially since this isn't, you know, a Sony TV with all its own processing happening in the display itself. Seriously, that's impressive. But really, all of that is there to support the gaming experience. And what you're getting here really feels like an unparalleled experience. The combination of the excellent HDR performance, the super fast 240 hertz refresh rate, the clarity of 4K, and the response times of OLED is seriously like the whole package. And it's hard not to get sucked into whatever game you're playing on a display like this. I should note that although the Alienware 32 doesn't technically have certification for FreeSync Premium Pro or G-Sync Ultimate, it does have variable refresh rate, which is really all that matters when it comes to avoiding screen tearing. Really the only thing the Alienware 32 is lacking, especially as a 4K panel, is what these new LG OLED panels have, which is the ability to switch to a lower resolution and a higher refresh rate mode. LG's new 4K OLED panels offer a 1080p 480 hertz mode, which is pretty incredible and completely eliminates the choice that you have to make between monitors with higher resolutions and higher refresh rates. I'm not gonna mark down this as a negative for the Alienware 32 for not having this. I mean, this is a brand new feature, but I thought it was worth mentioning as something that new OLED monitors are doing to sweeten the deal even more. There's one last thing to talk about with the Alienware 30 QD OLED and that's consoles. And this is a huge point in favor of this monitor. I know this doesn't apply to everyone by any means, but this monitor was clearly crafted to be a console friendly display. First of all, the standard aspect ratio is, of course, guaranteed to be supported by all console games. That's a freebie. But the big deal here is what you can do with the HDMI 2.1 port, which gets you Dolby Atmos and variable refresh rate. Essentially, these features equip the Alienware 32 to be a proper TV replacement for your console, especially since it has HDMI eARC to support Atmos through signal pass-through. It's the first gaming monitor also to have Dolby Vision HDR, and Alienware even has a dedicated console mode here for HDR tone mapping. So if you happen to be a hybrid gamer and love the idea of using both a console and a PC interchangeably with this monitor, I can't think of a better solution. This really is as good as it gets. And I think that's a good place to land the plane here because Alienware now has three QD OLED options and they're all great, especially since they all come with that three year OLED burn-in warranty, which is a pretty big deal all on its own. 
Throw in the fact that Alienware will again be first to market with these, and it's clear the company wanted to double down on the huge success of the 34, and I think they're gonna accomplish that. It's not hard to see who the Alienware 32 is for. It's the most expensive of the three monitors coming in at $1,200, and it's also the most high-end, obviously, since it's 4K but it's actually cheaper than the Odyssey Neo G8, which is actually the same price as the Alienware 34 when it launched. Now, the Alienware 34 will always have its place, especially because it's now cheaper and people love their ultra-wide displays these days. But I really do think the Alienware 32 takes things a step further in terms of image quality and throw in that HDMI 2.1 port, you've got a really great strong display. It's certainly my favorite gaming monitor right now. And hey, if you happen to want to hook your console up too, this one's a no-brainer. So that's it, but I'm really curious what you guys think. So jump down into the comments and let me know how you think this one stacks up against the 34 inch model. And while you're down there, leave a like on this video and head over next to our review of the 27 inch model. Thanks for watching.